Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part six of Iron Man's hands. Now, the last few videos on Iron Man, I've been finishing off the arms. So I made these arms with uh, an articulated mechanism so you can put your hand straight in and this locks down and clamps your arm. Um, so now I'm returning to the hands so we can see how it all fits together. So let's see what's on the table. So, um, in the previous parts of the hands, I made these gloves with LED clusters on and these magnetic palm plates, which should snap into place, like so. And in this video, we're going to look at the hand plates. So, I've already done one section here, which has got a hinge in, which is made of 3D printed parts. Um, one of these is yet to be put together. And I've got the parts here, which we'll put together shortly. There's um, some pieces to make a hinge, and there's also a kind of wedge-shaped piece, um, which basically goes in here to set it at the right angle on the cuff of the arm. And I've also got a big tray of all of the 3D printed finger parts, which I've done, which I've painted up. These were 3D printed on my home printer, so you can still see the lines in there where the pieces are built up. But obviously all of those need mounting on the gloves for both hands. So let's put this hand plate together and see what happens next. So my 3D printed parts for this are just a very simple block with a hole in one end and uh, two wedges which match the contour of this piece. So I've got these steel axles which I bought from Rapid Electronics which I've used in many things including my Android project uh, which is just 2mm bits of steel so we're just going to push that through there. Okay, so um, basically that gets glued onto this. But we want to keep some sort of spacing between this and the rest of the hinge parts. So I'm going to make spacers out of the insulation from some wire, which I've got just here. So, I've already stripped a bit off for the other hand. We're just going to strip off a bit more of the insulation and cut some short sections to put onto the axle. There we go. So looking at the other one, you possibly can just see them in between spacing the pieces. So I just need to cut some very short sections and uh, slide that on there. So it spaces those apart correctly. We we'll also need to chop off the excess piece there, but I'll just do the other end. So that appears to fit together quite nicely. I think I've got just about the right spacing. So we'll see the axle sticks out there. Um, just gonna push one end back through. So you have to cut one end. And then just trim the end of that off. There we go, so I just need to glue that on there. And for that, I'm going to use hot glue. So this piece needs gluing in here. Um, one of the side of the 3D prints, the top surface is quite rough, and that's quite good because it means the hot glue or any glue will stick to it like a key. And um, the inside of these pieces is also quite rough where I've hacked at them to get them to be uh, a thin contour. So uh, gluing that on there shouldn't be too much trouble. So we just use a bit of hot glue. Place that as centrally as possible. Right, that's stuck down. We now need to place this in here. Stick down those two chock pieces to match the contours. So, looks pretty good. Just put some glue on to each one.
All right, so both my hinges are installed and they work perfectly well, but obviously they're quite floppy still. Um, I was going to put a metal spring in there in a clever mechanism, but actually what I'm going to do is use some foam, which is LD45 plaster oak foam that I originally built the foam suit from, and I'm going to stick that across the back of each one um, at the ends and in the middle so that basically it acts like a bit of a spring as it twists. So that should sort of home them back, but obviously still you can stretch when you put your hand back so the uh, thing lifts backwards. So let's glue that into both of them and we'll see how that works. I've glued that piece of foam in and as you can see it twists and springs back so basically you can do the Iron Man thing with your uh, palm repulsor and the hand plate sort of stays back in shape it needs to be kind of lengthways anyway if your hands will be underneath so that's kind of the right position for it anyway we'll see how that works out when it's attached to the cuff which is the next part so now I need to place the hand plates onto the arms um, so they're in the right location, and I think that is just so it comes to my knuckles there. And I've got these little plastic wedges that I've printed, which are going to go on there somewhere, and that should hold the hand plate at the right angle. Um, so, obviously with this mechanism, this piece flicks forward, so I think I need to attach the hand plates onto the half that moves rather than the half that doesn't. Uh, so that the piece that moves doesn't hit it, because if it's back there, it might run into some issues. So, let's see where that needs to go. About there, I think. So I need to place that block on there. Now there's two pilot holes in this, so I need to drill a couple of holes and screw it on, and then glue the other piece onto the hand plate. Okay, so I've got these drill bits. Um, which are small drill bits, I think they are two and a half and two mil or something like that. One is bigger than the other anyway, and they've got these sort of hex things on, which is quite useful to operate by hand. So the smaller one already fits through the holes in here, uh, which means that I can very carefully make holes in here to mount them. So I've drawn a line there, which is 75 millimeters from the end, which is where that needs to mount. Um, and it needs to go that way round, so I just need to place this on here and then attempt to make a mark with this drill. Yep, there we go, and just make a pilot hole there. And the screw's going to come through from the other side, so we can then use the bigger one just to make that slightly bigger. And then we need to do the other hole, so let's put the screw in first, then we'll make the other hole, then we'll screw that one on. This reach is okay with the shaft extension, so that is screwed on. And I just need to make the other hole, so with a very small drill bit. can pull that to one side and make a bigger hole there using that one. And find one of these screws. There we go. Yep, there we go, so that's mounted on there, and now I can glue this on. So this goes on here, I've scratched the inside surface there to get back to the plastic so I'm not gluing to paint. Um, and I'm going to try and glue that on there as straight as I can. So 
Then we're going to use hot glue. Alright, so there we go, that's all fixed on, and obviously my hand can push that part back. Um, the one thing I did do, of course, was glue those on the wrong half, so in fact they're fitted on the stationary half, although the sprung half does in fact clear it okay. So, that seems okay, I've done both of them. And in the next part, I will be attaching all of the finger segments.